Would you buy ackee and saltfish from a Trini or doubles from a Jamaican restaurant? I feel like it's gonna make me or break me. Back. I sit with Top Chef Canada winner Trey Sanderson. I learn about his journey. We share stories, laugh, and dream of what the future holds. Now, let's break bread. So Trey, I'm a Trini, you're a Jamaican. Yes, sir. And as the legend goes, Trinidadians and Jamaicans are not supposed to get along. <laughs> so the whole point of this is to dispel that mythology. <laughs> One of the points, right? Tell me a little bit about your family. My mom, she's originally from Jamaica. So she brought- You were not born in Jamaica. I was not born in Jamaica. You were born where? Canada. Toronto? Scarborough. 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 Yes, sir. Okay, So respect. I like to say like, my mom brought that culture from Jamaica and brought it to Canada and then she raised us. So. Canadian Jamaican with like, you know. Jamaican. So you're very much like in a West Indian household exactly. in Scarborough, mm -hmm. which I think is not an unfamiliar ex immigrant no, experience. Definitely not. You know, you talk to a lot of Filipino people coming up, Italians, they grow up like Italians or Filipinos inside of this, this new culture, right? Yeah. W tell me a little bit about what that was like. Though. A lot of different things, learning the food and the culture and how the reggae music and the music and the vibes is like connected in and to the food. The culture mm -hmm. and the music was in the food. Yeah, yeah. What did that feel like in your house? Like Sunday morning, my mom would be blasting feel good music, <laughs> you know? So yep. as soon as you hear that, it makes you want to get up and, and see what she's cooking in the kitchen because it's, it's so connected. She's listening to that music to kind of get her in the mood of putting the soul into that food. So like when I heard that, that music and then I seen the food, I'm like, wow. This is, this is soulful, for sure. You know, you look at Jamaican and Caribbean food, it's, it's rustic, but it has so much flavor. Like, there's so many different ingredients that play a part in these cuisines. So once you hear and smell and see the food, it's incredible. It's it literally, this is why I'm the chef today, because of that food. You said you wake up in the morning, you're yeah. hearing Barris Hammond, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? That's your auditory input. <laughs> you start to smell the smells. What are those smells? You know, you got a little bit of allspice mixed with cinnamon, some roasted black pepper, you know what I mean? You know, like those certain spices, as soon as it hits, it gets very intense and like, it's unique. It's almost like it's burning incense, but it's just literally cooking stews that have been boiling away from morning, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. the oxtail, the curry goat, like it's so much flavor that goes into it. So you were waking up smelling for breakfast oxtail okay, and no, curry goat. No. No, no, this is, cause I did. <laughs> <laughs> we would be cooking that stuff for dinner. Exactly, like, she would have the oxtail like stewing away, but for breakfast it would be like ackee and saltfish, you know, red snapper, the like niche stuff. But yeah, like in the back burner, you would have the oxtail, you have the rice and peas. Going, know? it's coming for later, it's exactly. coming down the pipe. It's soon done, you know? Soon so, done, it's coming down the pipe. <laughs> you know, so it's, it was a lot of different things going on. So like the aroma was, was really interesting. To this day, I can never forget my, my mother's cooking because she's literally the reason I started doing this stuff. The reason you started doing it? Not the, the, the only reason, but like, you know, just trying these dishes at a young age and really like trying to understand it and, and, and the culture. You know, Caribbean food has so much flavor and, and cool ingredients. You know, we have the sea right there. So it's like everything is very easy to grab. You know what I mean? Everything is organic. Exactly. They don't even know the word organic in the Caribbean because everything, everything is just organic. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> There's no season, everything's in season. Everything's in season you know, so with the most arable soil, is the most fruitful, exactly. best avocado ever. The Caribbean is a very interesting place in the world Definitely. if you look to access culinary history. Because a lot of culinary history has used the Caribbean as a conduit, mm -hmm. right? Do you feel that you are doing your best to represent this powerful food conduit that's mm -hmm come through the, the Earth's history. Like yeah. it's really amazing history that's going through the Caribbean. Yeah, like being inspired by some of the world's best, like Thomas Keller and seeing what he's doing with French cuisine. I'm taking some of the classic dishes and really refining it and bringing it to a, you know, really refined and rich level. What does that mean? Like we look at Caribbean food, it's easily like a good takeaway uh, dinner or whatever. But for me, I want to look at it and really modernize it a little bit, you know? Being the conversation with, you know, some of the best restaurants, like those Italian restaurants, those French restaurants, why can't Caribbean food be at a three Michelin star level? That's that's my goal and that's my mission, because I feel like it's so much flavor that goes into these dishes and these in these in this food, and and I I, I just strongly believe that Caribbean food is, is one of the best cuisines out there for sure.
What's your very first food memory? And I'll tell you, I'll give you an example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My very first food memory that I can remember and recall was stepping up onto a chair. My father was here. There was a bowl of pork dumpling mix wow. and some wonton wrappers okay. here and him showing me how to wrap wontons. Mm -hmm. I was maybe four or five years old at mm -hmm. the counter. Yeah, yeah. This is my first food memory. Yeah, yeah. And I was obsessed with dumplings mm. to this day. It's funny you say dumplings because like forming them, making letters and things you know, as a kid. That was like the only kind of like memory I had was helping her make dumplings. Why is that so memorable? I think because it was like the first time I stepped like actual foot in the kitchen and was like actually helping working with heat and, and all that stuff. So it was like, it was interesting. Um, yeah. You know, I was always tasting her food. She's like, it's not ready yet. It needs more salt or whatever. So, yeah, yeah. but it was it was interesting to see um, my palate develop over the years and, and understand it better and, and understand what is what is right and what is wrong and all that stuff. So aside from just showing you how to make dumplings and showing you the flavors and kind of getting you trained on the environment in the kitchen, what other kind of takeaways you take away from that moment? I don't know, like, I think just like understanding the process. This kind of food takes like hours, hours. hours. So it's like just understanding the process and not rushing it. Because as soon as you start to rush it, it doesn't turn out the way my grandma made it or your mom made it, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just understanding the process and, and what time goes into and how, how much you have to kind of pay attention to the details because you could always add too much water, flour, and then you could turn up with a tough dumpling, right? So it's like just understanding the small details. So. When did you realize, well, oh, actually, this is what I want to do? I don't know. I think it was like, when I when I finally touched high school, they had like a culinary program, whatever. And I was like cooking at home because my mom would finish later, whatever. So I started like picking up, like looking in my pantry, like, okay, what can I make? Like I have canned sardines, I have corned beef. Freestyling. You know what I mean? I'm like, okay, I don't know how to cook, but I'm going to try. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw a pad on it and do my thing. Eventually it just, really turned into really good food. And then I just like... And did you pull when you were experimenting? Were you pulling from like the allspice and the yeah, clove? Definitely. And, or were you pulling oh. from other things? No, yeah, I was like, I was, literally our pantry was like, yeah, like all the, you know, it the was on essential. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. you got your garlic powder, you got the paprika, you got the allspice, yeah. nutmeg, everything. everything. So yeah. for me, I was smelling these spices. I was like, okay, maybe if I add too much of this, it'll be too strong. So I'm using a little bit of the nutmeg. I'm using a little bit of a clove, you know what I mean? Yeah, just yeah, to really yeah, yeah. develop those flavors. It kind of just, I just went, I just went like ham with it. And were you cooking for your friends and family or just your family yeah, on like the low, siblings. like yeah. just your siblings? Yeah. And sometimes when they rate you, they would rate you? Yo, sometimes it's like, <laughs> what is this? I'm like, <laughs> yo, honestly, try it though. <laughs> you know what I mean? So they just look on it like, mm. No, this one, Trey. <laughs> Trey, this one looking a little fishy. Yeah, yeah. But um, it was fun because it's like, they're my critics in a way. Like, okay, it's too salty. Okay, I try Nothing it. like a West Indian critic too. You know? <laughs> it's like, damn. So it's like a little bit of, um, obviously like trial and error. But like for me, I didn't really care because I'm just having fun with, like with cooking. So I was like, yeah, I was yeah, in my yeah. career at the time. So I was like, just taking like, obviously the, Crowd, the advice and the, the you know feedback with a little bit of grain of salt because who knows if I would be Top Chef Canada season next winner, you know? Yeah, respect like that, you know what I'm yeah, respect that, respect that. You know, yeah. I love that you say that your siblings was the critics, you know? Yeah. Because when I started doing restaurants, people would be like, oh, are you worried about the critics coming in? And I'm like, my brother. I grew up in a West Indian household cooking for West Indian people. Yeah. They criticize you. These critics can't tell me nothing that yeah. <laughs> my family never already told me. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Everybody is just so straight and to yeah. the point. Definitely. And I think no filter. I, there's no filter, yeah. and I love and appreciate that so much. Yeah. It's thick skin, like you know, like growing up in a, a West Indian household, you can't have the talk back. You gotta, yeah. you know, like you gotta obviously listen to your parents. It was the discipline and, and understanding that, you know, my parents, my mom didn't come to Canada for us to have a normal life. She wanted the best for us. You know, leaving that small island was like a, a risk, obviously, but you know, that's what she did. She wanted us to, to be great. She wanted us to be successful. So she was hard on us. So she was she was preparing us for the real world for sure. It's kind of emotional to, to talk about sometimes, but it's the truth, you know, it's it's not easy to to be colored in in this world and you kinda of, kinda of realize it more and more, but change is happening and, and obviously like, you know, 
I love I love I love the culture. So it is what it is. But I just I appreciate um, the risk my mom took and, and all that stuff for us to have a better life because without her there won't be like a Trey Sanderson and, and my family, whatever, you know, so I appreciate it. Alright, I wanna show you something. Look at this. Okay. Give me this some playback. Give me your thoughts on this one. No way. <laughs> oh my god, did you win? Yes, I just won. The whole thing. Oh my god, I'm so proud of you. I know you could have done it. I'm so <laughs> Yeah. I'm so proud of you, sweetheart. I did it for you, Mom. Mommy, love you so much. I love you too, Mom. To Canada's top chef, Trey. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Wow. Cheers. <laughs> when you look at that clip and you see your mom like that, mm -hmm. who sacrificed so much mm -hmm. for you here, and then to share that moment with her over a screen like that, what was that like? Lots of flashbacks. She see me at some of my best and some of my lows. And I know how she's been too, cause she's been working, you know, her whole, whole, whole life. She's literally been working, you know, grinding, you know, trying to put food on the table for us, you know? And, and I can respect that because like, it's not easy, you know, parent, being a parent is not easy and, and providing is not easy. Cause you know, you want to be a role model for your, your kids, right? So for her, it was just like an emotional thing because she she knows how hard she worked for me to be at this level and mm -hmm. and be in this in this situation right now because she wanted her, her kids to be successful and and I really wanted to make my mom happy because she she did she did a lot for me she really did. So you feel like your success in that moment justified her entire decision in life. It's a lot. That's yeah. a lot of weight. Yeah. It's a lot of weight, my brother. It's a lot. It's and a lot of weight. Yeah, it's just crazy. Like I say all the time, like I didn't really come from a lot. So like for this to happen for our family and and to see my mom like cry and get emotional, it's like, it's it's literally, it's, it's great. It's a good feeling, you know? How did you feel when you saw your mom cry like that? Yeah, I just know how, how she felt because she's, she worked so hard, man. Like she's, she's a hard worker, man. Like, do you think you picked up some of that? For sure. Like, as soon as I got into the cooking industry, the restaurant industry, I'm coming home 1 a.m., 2 a.m. in the morning, working. But on my days off, you will see me like still in the kitchen still, working on my craft, you know, working on certain things that I could work on. Mm -hmm. Like applying it back when I get back to those professional kitchens. Cause, mm -hmm. you know, I think for me it was like kind of keeping myself grounded, humble and, and hungry at the same time. Because I could never forget where I came from. You know what I mean? So you feel like you have a responsibility to your mother because what she sacrificed? Uh, does that sit in your mind a lot or is it more than that? There's more than that, but a little bit, you know what I mean? She sacrificed to come to Canada and for us to have a better life. So this, these moments and this history is, is, is key for me. It's literally writing my story is how she like kind of wanted it in a way because this is what she sacrificed, you know what I mean? This is a sex story. So did it make you happy or sad to see your mom in that? state at that happy moment. and sad like a little bit of everything you know what i mean it's, it's it's a happy emotion you know when you cry it's not always sad it's it's a happy emotion for sure she's still talking about it to this day like, <laughs> i can't believe you won man like honestly she didn't picture me as a chef like a lot of my family members like like really yeah they were questioning like you're a chef like yeah i'm i'm a professional cook i'm a chef it's just not a an industry anybody wants to jump into like that because of the stories and you don't make a lot of money and whatever the case is. But for me, I always looked at it as I'm loving what I'm doing and I'm passionate about it. So the money will come or whatever it is. I'm, I'm just loving what I'm doing and, and I'm putting smiles on people's faces and they're really enjoying my food. So it's like, for me, the money didn't matter for It me. doesn't even matter. No. You're, you're trying to bring people together. This is the magic and power of food. So here you are in the world, you, you, you're now a public figure. People I know guess. Trey, and it's a very interesting uh, conundrum for the black public figure, mm -hmm. right? or people of color who are a public figure. Mm -hmm. Whether we want to or not, the world at large treats us as though we are representatives globally of that community. I'm really curious how you feel about all that. <sighs> Yeah, like- Because it's new to you as well. Definitely. It's a little bit of adjustment, but you know, for me, 
I'm willing to take on that responsibility with the community that we have already, like yourself, you know, like there's not, it's not just me. Like we could all come together to try to build communities and make it bigger than it really is. I want you to look at this clip. Oh, this one. <laughs> I haven't been a head chef. People just don't realize how hard it is until you step into the skin of a black guy. How people look at you, just because you have braids, just because how you talk. My talent needs to be shown. I want to show the black community that someone like me could be a top chef. That's a big one. Yeah, I was, I was crying on that one. <laughs> Yeah, you know what I find interesting yeah. about that is you want to show the black community you could be a top chef. Yeah. But is it more important or equally important to show the people who are not in the black community that you could be a top chef? Yeah. I don't know. Like, it's... Like, I always say, like, you know, you look at me, like, people want to label a quote-unquote chef and how they look. Yeah. You look at Trey Sanders and you don't think he's a chef. You probably think he he's, plays basketball or... He's into, you know, he does, he likes hip hop. Cultural bias. I got, I wanted to kind of change that. You know what I mean? For me, I have a dream, I have a goal. And for me to win the title is to really inspire the youth now in the, in the black community that some of my, of my color, you know, could do something that's different and big and more than just like, you know? It's a really powerful thing, yeah. right? But is that equal to or more powerful than a white yeah. six year old kid looking at the TV going, oh, this guy just won the Top Chef. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in their mind, coming up, because when I was coming up, yeah, that's true. I never saw that. Yeah. So, right? I, so I think of like the younger white kid yeah. who was at my level at that point, never seeing that. Yeah, that's true. So the impact is those people grow up to be people in yeah. jobs who have power to execute A, B, and C. Yeah. But if they're conditioned to never seeing yeah. positions of power represented outside of people that look like them, mm. they never think I believe, yeah. to approach you to be the head chef of a restaurant, to be the CEO of a corporation. That's crazy. Because it's a conditioning, right? Yeah. So I come back to the question, is it equally or more significant? You're right. You know, I think I'm just trying to be political and correct, but I think... This is not politically correct. This is a safe space. Yeah, I feel like with the, the industry um, growing up, I never had a black chef to look up to. I Me never either. had, um, you know, a man of color to look up to, except like Bob Marley and like the guys that are into music, like, you know, the reggae artists. So for me to win this title and feel like it's a, like you said, a responsibility now to really inspire the youth and the next six year old kid that looks like me to be, you know, a top chef, you know what I mean? It's, it's very important because I never had that growing up. It's kind of sad. It's interesting. So you're saying like the representation matters. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. It's significant. So I think that it's an interesting responsibility that we have to bear. Yeah. Um, sometimes an unwelcome one, but regardless, it is with us, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that it's really commendable to you that at your stage in your life, you're so mindful of that already. Yeah. Yeah, like you look at this industry, I'm not gonna lie. It's very white dominant for chefs, you know what I mean? So I feel like there should be more people of color and as a head chef and as owners and all that stuff because you don't really see it. But for me to win it, it's like, it's just, it just kind of changes and, and changes the conversation a little bit. It's, it's really important. What is your favorite dish that you cooked on Top Chef Canada? I always get asked this question. It's my first dish I presented was the jerk shrimp uh, with the roasted red pepper sauce. Why that dish? I think because I feel like people looked at me like, hmm, this guy has braids. I don't you know if he knows what he's doing. Like, who's this kid? This guy probably plays ball. Or like, you know, like, just like the stereotypes, you know what I mean? You think, you think people were projecting that onto you? Mentally. Or you were projecting that from them onto you? I th <laughs> both. I, th I just feel like... <laughs> I never had the opportunity to showcase what I could do, and this was the opportunity to do it. Right. So when I won that first challenge, it was like, I'm, I'm you playing. You set the template. Yeah, yeah, I'm playing around here. The food that I was presenting was different. Like, I think the judges hadn't really tried it or tasted it before in that way that I was presenting it, so it was, it was unique. I stood out a little bit, so that's why I think I had the upper hand, because I was doing something completely different. But it could also be a detriment. It also yeah. could be perceived as a detriment. So I really commend you for diving into that and saying, look, this is me. This is what I do. Take it or leave it. 
and you'll stand on that. And I respect that because that allows you as a person, at the end of the day, you could look at yourself in the mirror and say, I did me. Mm -hmm. I got kicked out because I did me, but I could sleep at night. Where does that resolve come from? Is that like tenacity of your mother? Like you think the DNA is coursing through you like that? I think throughout my career, I've just been told that I wasn't good enough and, you know, like I'm not ready, uh, you know. Who told you that? Managers of restaurants? Yeah, just like chefs, you know, cooks, whatever, senior guys. I've heard it so many times. So for me to stand my ground and be like, you know what, I'm gonna do me and nobody could tell me anything. So that's kind of the attitude I had going into this competition. Is this one of the first <laughs> times you're able to publicly present your own food? Yes. As opposed to working in a restaurant, producing somebody else's yes. food? Nobody's ever seen what Trey could do on this scale. So this was How'd like- How'd that feel, man? Man, like that's why like sometimes I just like, I get so emotional and like in my head or like, I feel a way because like, I feel like I have so much to give, but I never had that opportunity. I never had somebody come to me like, hey Trey, like, you know, you should have the menu for the night. So for me to get selected to be on the show as a black guy and, and as a chef, winning was, was the only option. It was the only option. I've been dealt in my whole career. Like I never had like a mentor to look up to like that as a chef. So for me, it was like, I'm betting on myself, I'm going in. How many years have you been in the industry? 10 years and count. 10 years count. Yeah. You said you have yet to find a mentor. Yeah. I find that really kind of, it's kind of sad. It is a little bit sad, but for me, it is what it is. I'm, I just want to change the narrative a little bit. Change how people view us colored people in this industry, you know? It's, it's a little bit different. How is it different? I just feel like there should be more opportunity for us. I'm not trying to speak highly of myself, but I'm clearly skilled. I clearly have the ability, but well, why not give me the opportunity? So I, I, want, I really want to change that and really open the doors for people who look like me. Open the doors for, for brothers and, and sisters and, and all that stuff because it's important. There's no reason for us to be capsuled and, and, and marginalized and, and held in, in this area where our talents are not seen. So for me, that's been going on for years. I clock out, go home, and then work on my craft. I'm always constantly working because when it comes time to like this, to work and, co and compete on Top Chef, now is my time for my voice to be heard. And it's interesting because I tell you a story that happened to me, right? I was working at a hotel, very reputable hotel. I went to the lunchroom one day, and outside the lunchroom, they had pictures of all the chefs across the whole company globally, right? And I'm looking at the chefs, da, 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 da. there's not one chef, there's probably 120 chefs on the board, something like this, right? Mm -hmm. And I know that this company operates in the Caribbean and parts of the mm -hmm. world, right? Not one chef looked like me. Mm -hmm. So I was like, wow, this bodes really ominously for my future with this company, but let me try and like talk to the chef about it. Mm -hmm. So I went up to the executive chef's office, knocked on his door. Hey, chef, can I ask you a question? Yeah, you're, my door's always open to you, Raj. Come on in. So I'm like, okay, walk up, let's sit at the desk. He's like, how can I help you, man? I said, you know, chef, I can't help but notice I was outside the lunchroom. I saw the board of all of the chefs in the last year. I noticed that not one of them looked like me. So I'm like, you know, I would love to progress in this industry and with this company, but it, it looks kind of ominous, my future, you know, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. You, you know what he said to me? And, you know, as a, as a business owner, as people who deals with corporations all the time and corporate partners all the time, it still shocks me to this day that these words came out of his mouth. But he said to me, y'all just don't seem like you're that interested. What? Quote. <laughs> That's crazy. Never forgot it, eh? I never forgot it. Nah. It was in that moment, Trey, that I decided I will never work for another person ever again in my entire life. Mm. I will go sleep under this bench before I go work for another person in my entire life. And I say this to come back around to you because you said, with all of this success that you've shared, still no one has given you the opportunity. Because, you know, 
in a in a in a very similar way somebody out there doesn't think that you deserve that opportunity yeah. right so this is my challenge to you create that opportunity mm. don't wait for somebody to give you an opportunity facts if you create your own opportunity they can't take it from me my brother <laughs> yeah yeah that's yours you built it especially as a person of color in an industry that does not revere people of color create your own opportunity do you buy doubles from a jamaican and do you buy aki and selfish from a trini <laughs> wait what <laughs> would you buy aki and selfish from a trini restaurant okay or would you buy doubles from a jamaican <laughs> restaurant i feel like this going to make me or break me but <laughs> Hey man. <laughs> you have the weight of the whole Caribbean on you, my brother. Uh, <laughs> you got some tuners. You got to tune it in right now. Um, I think I'm going to say I'll take Aki and Selfish from a chinny. You would take Aki and Selfish, right? Cuz that's not that's the, like you can't I think mess that's that up. the safer bet too. <laughs> yeah. You can't mess that up, man. Like Doubles is like Trini. Like, that's a Trini. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you can't like, You don't buy doubles from it. Exactly. You don't so, buy oxtail from Trini either. Uh, oxtail is borderline, okay. borderline. I got a question for you. Okay. Oxtail or curry goat? Curry goat. Okay. That was clean. Hands down. It was clean. You know what? My, my three favorite foods on earth are uh -huh. Vietnamese pho. Uh -huh. I'll eat that every day. Uh -huh. uh, cheesecake. I love cheese. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm not really great with dairy, but I love cheesecake. And curry goat roti. Fire. My last question. What would you like your impact to be 20 years from now? Because I tell you, you're telling me very similar stories that I've lived through 30 years ago, which tells me I have failed. No, you haven't failed. No, I have failed in making the environment better for you coming behind me, right? So it gives me a resolve to continue to do what I think is necessary to do mm. so that the generation after you I hear less of those stories. Yeah. This is cumulative, right? So where's where's trade? What do you see trade in 20 years? I I I really want to make a big impact on this industry. I really want to really pave the way for for people and the youth and and people who look at like me and and really inspire cuz I don't want I don't want anybody to feel like they don't have the opportunity because of the skin color. You know what I mean? I don't want anybody to feel like that. That's it's not a good feeling cuz that's Cause you know that feeling. I know that feeling and and I don't want anybody's skill to be camouflage because of the color. You know, I think it's important for me to showcase that like, you know, I could do the same things you could do but better. Just really inspiring and really be be a advocate to to the youth and 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 the next generation because it's very important. I'm confident that you that you will achieve because you have that kind of stubbornness that I think is mm -hmm. comes from the tenacity of your mother mm -hmm. the way you grew up and the environment and you come from like you say Lico from Scarborough and mm -hmm. now you raise up you know so i find that that's uh very inspiring already mm -hmm. so i can only wish you more of more of that in the future yeah yes yeah? thank you so much of course even your story you know being a man of color in this industry it's it's amazing to see you know that i'm, I'm not alone out here so and you know you're pushing for the same kind of message that i am so you know i i appreciate it the more we just talk about life and the reality of life yeah. the more we can appreciate another person's life facts yeah and this is the magic of food right yeah. and the magic of music is it's a gateway to culture and it's a beautiful 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 thing and i thank you for your contribution to it all mm -hmm. um and it matters i see you okay i see you i love what you're doing continue to do what you're doing make your own opportunity so i'm going to tell you create your opportunity it's right here in front of you just build it just build it facts all right so ah, yes sir pleasure pleasure to like watch chat with you my guys appreciate you bro